Good morning, people. Welcome to Friday morning. And I uh, hope you're in for a, just a tremendous day. I hope that you have a great weekend that's coming up and, uh, and that your worship experience on Sunday is going to be phenomenal for you. Uh, we're going to conclude today with the issue of Balaam. I was at one stage thinking that Balaam was going to be a one-hit wonder. But there's a whole bunch of stuff in the story of Balaam that is important for us to remember. I want to finish with the day with the thought today based upon some of the stuff we said yesterday. You know, God has always wanted to speak to men. God is wanting this relationship with you and me that uh, where he can speak, where we can listen, we can talk back and we can have this beautiful relationship conversation with God that is not always verbal, you know, but it's not but there's something about this God speaking into your situation in the most remarkable way that you end up, that you know that you know that you know that God has spoken. It's wonderful. It doesn't happen all the time. I wish it happened more. But there are often times we just know that I've heard from God and God has guided. Sometimes not. That's why we live by faith and not by sight. But there's an element of the desire to communicate from God to us. There should be the same for us to communicate to God. But all too often we're either too busy or we're too nervous or we're afraid of what he's going to say. But that doesn't take away the fact that God always wants to speak to us. There are three primary ways, there may be more ways that God would want to speak to you. The first way is directly through his word. That Bible is the most incredible, incredible book. It speaks volumes. And the intriguing thing about the Bible is you can read the same passage over and over again at different times and read it again a week later and every time you read it it says something different to you now secular writings as great as shakespeare was and byron was and all they only have one thing to say and they only say it one way but when you read the scriptures you find that god is able to use the same thing over and over and over again read it every time you read it it's got a different meaning for you in life it is an incredibly unique book don't read it to your detriment and I want to tell you but if you do it's an awesome God speaks through his word sometimes God speaks through other people somebody will come along and say man I have a word for you I just want to encourage you in a particular way and it's beautiful when people speak into our lives I'm a bit nervous sometimes listening to people because I've heard them say some of the strangest things that if I were to do that I would know categorically that actually that's not probably know what God would want me to do but sometimes people who are powerful in your life, people who God sends into your life. And with great discernment, you will know who those people are. When they speak into your life, something unique happens. Listen to them for the word of God. Don't take for granted everything they say. But sometimes somebody may say something that God is wanting to say to you. Word of God, the word of people, because of God. But the third thing is, is intriguing is God speaks to us through unusual circumstances. It doesn't get more unusual than the story of Balaam. For goodness sake, here's this guy on his donkey and the donkey's behaving terribly. The donkey's all over the place, smashing his leg against the wall. It lies down and as the donkey lies down, he beats the heck out of it until the donkey eventually speaks to him. Now listen, people, unusual circumstances can be pretty much anything. Sometimes God uses tragedies. Can you believe that? That God uses tragedies in your life to achieve an end for his kingdom. He's not being mean. He's not being ugly to you. He's just using those circumstances to, first of all, draw you closer to him and to use those circumstances that in time are going to be a great blessing for his kingdom. God is obsessed with his kingdom. God wants his kingdom to come. In order for his kingdom to come, his will must be done. And sometimes he uses strange circumstances and strange events and strange things to you. And you're saying, how can this be? Where does this thing come from? Why did I lose that loved one? Why did I lose my job? How come I lost all that money? Where, where did this all go? Well, I gotta tell you people, nothing happens by accident. God has a purpose. Even if you mess up, God is able to redeem that mess up for his kingdom. You know that? That is so cool that God is able to take your blunders and your mess ups and use them for the betterment of his kingdom. And you didn't even know he was doing that. And yet God can do that. It may not have been the perfect thing for you, 
but for God's kingdom to be established, he uses sometimes the most unusual circumstances. I sit where I sit today through a series of very unusual circumstances. If you knew our story, it would maybe intrigue you, might bore you, but it's certainly intriguing for me to know that we are here, Helene and I and my kids are here today because of unusual circumstances, probably more that than anything else. And as you respond to unusual circumstances and dependence upon God, God is able to use those circumstances to His will and for the betterment of His kingdom. Think about your life. Nothing happens by accident. If that did, then that would trash God's the theology of God's sovereignty. If things were able to happen by chance, then God would not be king. God would not be sovereign. We believe He is king and He is sovereign. Therefore, everything that happens is according to His will and plan, even if you mess it up. But the beauty of God is His amazing grace enables us to redeem the blunders of the mess-ups of the past for the purpose of His will to be achieved and for the growth of His kingdom. Yes, I love that stuff, man. You're going to have a good day now. Cheers. We'll see you on Sunday. Bye.